Hey everyone! So I guess if I'm talking to you through video, it means that my connection to you has died and technology has failed us all. Uh, but hopefully I'll be able to convey the same kind of thing I wanted to through this platform as opposed to talking to you live. So I study among all the spaces in social media that I play in, online harassment especially. Uh, we've had a big group at the University of Maryland, almost 30 students voluntarily going through really like the worst of the worst of what's online. And our project has gone on there for about 18 months and so it overlapped with the election. And one thing that I saw in Twitter but especially in other platforms is this real increase in uh, the really kind of nasty stuff that would people would say to one another. And it's not just the nasty stuff from the nasty people who are going to be doing nasty things online uh, no matter what. This is people who had been having kind of civil conversations, maybe politically impassioned, and had shifted their language from something that appeared sort of normal to something that really veered into a really aggressive kind of space, whether it's name calling, uh, insulting the integrity or the intellectual capabilities or just kind of logic of the other side. We definitely saw this on both sides of the political spectrum. I think we saw more really aggressive, nasty stuff on the conservative side, but the liberals are definitely not exempted. They say all kinds of bad things uh, about conservatives, too. And so in addition to that work, I also work on personalization, recommender systems and personalizing content. And we've heard a lot about the echo chamber that this kind of personalization might create, especially if you look at something you know, like Facebook, where they're tailoring the posts that you see from your friends. And so I think that there is an unexplored research space of how that kind of personalization can normalize things like harassment, but even just incivility. Uh, if you have a few friends and they start posting really angry, nasty stuff, and you engage with that, whether you agree with the tone or not, but you start seeing more and more of it, which is how those algorithms work, does it actually normalize that behavior in a way that when you get really angry about something that's happened or something you're seeing, you're more likely to engage in it too? And that's a sort of unexplored question. There's definitely some work in that space, but it's not something that we're looking at broadly. Um, so just a few of the pieces that I think touch on that. Fox and Tang have done some really interesting work in video games and looking at harassment in that space and how it gets normalized. And I think that's a really interesting research model that could apply here. Uh, obviously, there's the work on social contagions, which potentially could apply here. Is incivility or harassment something that you can model as a contagion? But I think really for a research area in HCI, there's this question of if we personalize content, if we improve the way that people are interacting and engaging, and that improvement comes as a measure of how much time are they spending on the site, how much are they posting, that's fine. But we've kind of ignored this question of what are the impacts of that personalization in a social space, which is also a critical research area to all of us uh, in this community. And so I would really like to see more research that looks at what kind of negative social behaviors become normalized through personalization and are there ways around that? And I'm sure we will hear more about that today when we're talking about things like fake news, um, you know, spreading of rumors and that kind of thing. I think the interface is actually the really critical place to address those questions. So if we were to find, for example, that you get a normalization of harassment or incivility uh, through personalization, right? You highlight that content and it increases people's willingness to behave in this kind of negative way. And then the question becomes, what do we do about that? How do we adjust interfaces to respond to that? And I don't think the solution is necessarily less personalization. Uh, we've certainly looked in the personalization research space at things like increasing diversity, uh, you know, trying to avoid that echo chamber effect. But I don't know that that's necessarily the right solution. Uh, I think we need to think more about, as a platform, how do we want to respond to that? And that leads to some interesting questions. So there's a really nice project that was done looking at if someone makes a harassing comment on Twitter, um, something that's racist or sexist, could you respond to that? 
and, uh, and actually encourage the person to behave better. And there was a bot that would say, hey, you know, you're actually talking about real people. Uh, you know, maybe you want to back off. And if that bot was a white male, the people who were making their harassing comments uh, would kind of have a positive response to that. Um, they would reflect more on their actions. And I think that's a really interesting thing that leads us to think about, you know, what can the interface do to encourage you to maybe behave a little bit better? There's definitely some research in the space of uh, harassment and cyberbullying to say, you know, can we tell people to take a step back and think about if they want to post something. But if we've normalized that behavior, they may totally say yes. So if you're a platform and you know that this behavior has been normalized and it's becoming more common, I think that there's then a real challenge of how do you address that on the platform? What do you do in the interface about it? Um, you know, things like bots and auto responses are good, but I think there's also a question of, do you want to allow people to do this and where do you want to draw the line? Um, free speech questions always come up here, but I think that all these platforms have policies against certain types of harassment and those policies are not well enforced. And uh, if you get into the data sets that we developed on Twitter as part of our online harassment research, uh, there can be no questioning that. There's truly vile, aggressive, violent stuff that is allowed to go that, uh, that totally violates the terms of service of these places. Now, incivility is probably not something that you can regulate, uh, but a lot of this crosses the line and there's a question then as a platform, do we want to allow this kind of communication, this kind of really aggressive stuff, or do we maybe want to stop it or put something on there that makes it less likely that it's going to be shown to other people, increasing that normalizing effect, or are there ways that we can hide it or limit the way that it's shown? Um, you know, I don't have any great answers about the right way to do that, but I think there's definitely interface solutions that are in line with the policies that social media companies have that could limit the impact and the reach of these kinds of, you know, harassing and aggressive posts that violate their terms of service in a way that could then reduce the normalization effect that I suspect is there. So I don't know, I think I've probably outlined a bigger research area than we originally thought about uh, when we were putting this panel together. But I think, you know, out of the election, seeing the really nasty stuff that's happened again on both sides uh, has been upsetting. And there are ways that I think as an HCI community, we can study the full spectrum of that problem from once that stuff gets posted and you start seeing it because it's personalized for you, what impact does that have on you? And then once we understand that, uh, what's the way that we can adjust the interface, whether it's the personalization algorithms or the way the content is allowed to be shared um, and amplified that could potentially make that better.